What's going on everybody? Kwaku here, back with another video. Today, as promised, even though I'm a week late and all the news cycle has passed it all, uh, is a look at the Apple Music Preview application that is now on Windows 11. Uh, it's in preview, so they definitely write clearly in the fine print saying that it is a preview version, so not all features may work as expected. But I'm still going to nitpick if features aren't working because I just expect that Apple doesn't release preview things like this. But if I do, take it with a grain of salt. But regardless, this is Apple Music. This is the Microsoft Store listing of it. Uh, it says here, stream millions of songs with no ads. Of course, all of this is with a disclaimer that you have Apple Music Plus. Um, so if you're a subscriber of that, I believe I signed up for it um, and they gave me a two month free trial because I've never had Apple Music Plus. So if you go through the app and you sign up, you can get a two month free trial of it. And of course, if you buy an iPhone or any Apple device, they pretty much just hand it to you um, a free trial of it for a couple months. So that's pretty nice. Uh, it says watch music videos and curated music video playlists. Follow along with your favorite songs using real time lyrics. I will tell you that that does not work right now. Uh, create your own playlist or jump into personalized mixes uh, and picks based off of the music you love and listen now. New radio stations with a dozen of shows. New subscribers get one month free. That is wrong. You get two month free, not one month. So don't know where that came from. Um, and then it says uh, browse picks and playlists from Apple Music editors. And uh, when you only know the words, find music by searching lyrics. That, in fact, does work and it works pretty nicely. So now let's let's jump into uh Apple Music itself. So Apple Music uh, is Apple's streaming service. And you can see here, um, I was looking up music and I got addicted to this song, Best Part uh, by Daniel, or oh, featuring Daniel Caesar and her. Uh, but going back to listen now, I'll just tell you one thing real quick off the bat, because I am signed in and I am an Apple Music subscriber, this listen now page that you see in front of you, obviously will look different depending on uh, your preference, obviously. You may have a bunch of like rock music in it. You may have a bunch of classical music. It's all on your preference, so ours will always look different unless you somehow listen to the same stuff I do. On top of that too, if you're not an Apple Music subscriber, this page will not load. This page is gonna show a try again button um, and you'll press it and it won't do a thing. It just won't do anything. Um, so by default, if you click off of this, this is essentially what you'll see here. It'll, it won't even show listen now, it'll just show a try again with your Windows theme on it. Um, so of course my theme is red on the outline, so it's gonna show a lot of uh, red elements, including this little cursor button here. Because again, it is a, a Windows app, so it has all the dark mode abilities and a whole bunch of little elements that we know of and love from this Windows 11 style of mica and things like that. So on top of that too, we have our menu area here and there is some jank to this um, and there is some non-jank to this. So let's just go through the menu and see what things do. So first of all, you got your title thing here. Uh, if you click the three dots, you have your library and yes, you can update your iCloud library um, I like how it doesn't say iCloud, it just says cloud library. Um, it says import, so you can import music from your computer, local music, and put it in here, and it'll appear under library right there. Um, you can also increase volume and decrease volume. Now, this is a funky thing here. Uh, I told you there's some jank, because in this application, I see at least two or three ways to increase the volume. And that's just in the application. And then, of course, you know, if you use Windows, that there are multiple more ways to increase and decrease your volume. So in this application, you can go to this menu. And on this side, it tells you what things do. And on this side, it tells you the shortcut to do it, which is pretty nice. So control up and down increases and decreases your volume. Um, so you can do that or you can click on these and it'll increase and decrease your volume. So if I click this, it'll actually decrease my volume and so on. Uh, so that's kind of jank and interesting. You also have settings here. And if you go into settings, you have some more information about the application general. You can sync your library, automatic downloads, check for available downloads all the time and so on and so forth. Now, one thing while we're in the menus now is you expect that uh, Microsoft Store applications, uh, you expect that you're able to just press like a side button on your mouse to go backwards if you use that function like I do. Uh, you can't do that on this. The, that button does not do anything. Uh, you actually do have to manually and physically click on the back button every single time you want to go back. Um, and as you can see, it jumped me out of settings. So 
that's how that works for that. It's really interesting for that part. Um, then you have my favorite area here, the playback options. So by default, most of these things are turned off. Lossless audio is turned off. Sound check is turned off. Um, crossfade songs is turned off. Um, sound check, I believe, is also turned off. A lot of things are turned off by default. And then by default, your audio quality is set to just high quality. And so I changed it to high res lossless. Uh, for everything, for downloads and streaming, because if you have a decent internet connection, at least in the U.S., uh, lossless, you should be able to pretty much do that. Um, so one thing that I definitely like to do uh, when I have any streaming service is turn on crossfading of songs. And basically what that does is uh, it blends the next song that you're about, that it's about to play in with the end of your current song. So it makes it kind of feel like it's a consistent, you know, music. There's no, like, there's no silence unless that song was mixed weirdly and they have, like, five seconds of silence at the end of their song. Uh, you have your sound enhancer, which says it changes the music's sound during playback or sound quality during playback. I don't really like that. I like my music to be consistent. So if it just sounds terrible the whole time, I like my music to just sound terrible. Or if it sounds great, I like it to sound great. So I just leave this off here uh, for my preferences. Lossless audio, like you already know, lossless, better quality, loss of uh, quality audio sound check here automatically adjusts songs playback volume to the same level um i'm not 100 percent sure what this is and i'm sure some people might actually tell me what this is and please do tell me what this means um as far as i know this just means that if another song is a lot quieter than the song you're about to play um it will adjust that song's uh let's say gain to be equal to the song you played previously so that way you're not kind of like having to turn up your volume or turn down your volume constantly. I'm assuming that's what that means. And then you got your listening history, which is nice because uh, you can see what you just played in case you forget and then you can go back in and save it to your playlists or whatever it is and continue from there. Uh, so yeah, let's go back. That was all of that chunk right there. Back to settings there. If you notice when I click on something, uh, you can click this kind of like zoom to go back. But if I click on, let's say, the next area restrictions and I hit back, it just exits out of it just exits out of settings. It doesn't actually uh, just go back a step. So that's kind of strange, too. That's another piece of jank that's in here. Uh, files. Again, you can add uh, local music. I don't have any local music, so I don't use it. Um, and then you got advanced, which is uh, updating album artwork and things like that. Send usage data to Apple. By default, of course, I turn this off. It's I think it's on by default. So I would recommend just turning this off because uh, what's the point? Uh, they say they don't collect data. I know it's for research studies and stuff like that. So yeah, that is settings inside Apple Music. Now let's press the back button so we go back home. Now we have our listen now, which again, like Apple said, it has like a playlist that are mixed uh for based on your taste. So it has a bunch of stuff that I've listened to, Linkin Park, Hunting Party, um, J Prince, uh, Nas, and stuff like that. So it has a lot of things that I listen to a lot of. Um, and it's pretty accurate, to be honest with you. These are things that I would actually listen to. Probably wouldn't listen to uh, this right here, or Selena Gomez. I'm not sure where that came from. Maybe I played like one song from her and it thought that I loved it. Um, so then you got uh, your browse, which is again, browse just overall Apple Music. Um, one thing that I wasn't able to test um, and I didn't notice any difference for was spatial audio with Adobe Atmos. Um, I do have AirPods Pro um, and obviously those support spatial audio. And I also have the Samsung Galaxy Buds, uh, Buds 2 that also support spatial audio, uh, but I haven't been able to tell that spatial audio is even doing anything. So unfortunately for that. And I don't have any headphones that have Dolby Atmos. Um, and I also don't have the sound bar in front of me. Uh, the sound bar in front of me does not have Dolby Atmos in it either. I'm kind of behind the times. So unfortunately, I can't test that. I would love to test that um, and see how it sounds. Uh, maybe in the future, I'll come back, make a quick YouTube short telling you about uh, that part. So going through, you just got a whole bunch of just music selections. Um, music Live, watch season one of Apple Music Live, so you can listen to live music. Let's say we wanna to go to our favorite bay, Alicia Keys. So here we are looking at, let's say, Alicia Keys' Apple Music Live, and I've had to record this segment so many different times because I've noticed so many issues in the recording. For starters, uh, it does have some uh, DMCA type settings in it where uh, OBS actually will not pick up the video playback. So let's say I wanna go back into what I wanted to show you all, like Empire State of Mind, her performing that. Uh, and you see that the video player is blank. Right now for me on my screen, it is in fact showing it, 
But on your side, looking at it, all you see is me hovering my mouse around and moving my mouse around. Uh, but it was playing it or it is playing it on my end. You, I can see the picture and everything like that. Um, so it is very strange. OBS is actually not allowed to uh, view the playback of that, similar to how some streaming apps do not show uh, certain copyrighted things, I guess. So Apple Music is doing the very same thing. But overall, um, just wanted to mention that the biggest jank of the video player area of this application is uh, there is some kind of pulsating of the screen, of the light of the screen. Um, on my end, you guys can't see it because it's a dark screen for you. Um, and then two... Uh, there's no quality settings. You cannot edit quality. You cannot say, I want to go from 480p to 4K or 1080p or anything like that. You don't see it here. You just have your closed captioning, your picture in picture, your timeline, and then your volume, and that's it. And the other thing with volume is that that control up and down or left and right, whatever it was to increase volume, uh, that also does not work for some reason. Uh, that shortcut, you just have to manually drag in and lower those settings as well. So that's the video player. Uh, going further on, we have our library area. So you see the two songs that I put on here, uh, Lupe Fiasco and Taylor Swift, just to show. So let's say we want to go into Taylor Swift. Uh, this is Superman. So let's say we want to hit play. And of course, then we're going to pause because, um, you know, the, her stuff is e extremely copyright unfriendly. Uh, but you can see the video player up here kind of reminds you of iTunes. Um, and Take this with a grain of salt, too, that uh, there is another application for Apple Music that's a third-party app that someone made, and it has most of the jank removed, which is pretty nice. And it has an iTunes-style view and also a Windows 11 like UI-style view, which is pretty nice. Uh, but right here, um, it's looking like there's one janky thing here. It looks like the icons at the bottom here are not aligned at all. Like The bottom of this uh, volume is not aligned to the playback queue. Uh, which is strange for Apple's type stuff, but this whole area here is pretty decent. Um, the other thing, too, is like I said, they said that you can view the lyrics of the song. Uh, you assuming that you click the name, uh, the title of the name right there, and you look around, you, there's no lyrics anywhere. And then another thing that there's nothing for this application yet is the fact that um, if you want to have some kind of full screen view, like how Spotify has it, I guess. Um, there's no full screen view um, or like if you were a Zune person back in the day where you could go full screen, just have a big artist title and things, just a nice interface just showing while you're playing your music and just doing something else. You can't do that on this either. All you get is this tiny little area where the music playback is going on. And that's kind of strange as well. Um, and then you got a tiny little grab handle right here where you can drag uh, the songs uh, timeline and scrub through everything. So. Playlists, uh, playlists, in fact, are another thing that you can do here. Obviously, I have no playlist. So let's say we want to add Taylor Swift to our playlist. You hit the three dots, add to playlist, new playlist, new playlist. It looks like it doesn't want to let me create a playlist. Nope, didn't want to let me make a playlist at all. So you can see the kind of issues that I'm running into. Yep, doesn't want me to play make a playlist at all. Let's go back into maybe uh, this side of here and hit playlist and new playlist now it lets me create a new playlist finally and if i go to playlist i see it there so up here by natural it doesn't let me uh create a new playlist so if i hit new playlist you see it doesn't even highlight barely it's hard to even select it you can select playlist but you can't select new playlist or anything like that and again that's pretty strange you can also add descriptions to your playlist and everything like that the final thing i wanted to show you all is if you only know the lyrics to a song uh, and that you can just type them in. So by default, let's click here, remove the Daniel Caesar. Let's think of a song. Let's think of um, You're the Best Part. So let's say You're the Best Part. And you see right there, it's, it brought up lyrics underneath, said You're the Oh, You're the Best Part. I've, obviously, I spelled You're wrong. And I can click this, and I know that this is, in fact, the song. Unfortunately, one thing, again, that I don't like about this is that I wish when you search for uh, you're the best part and it knows that you're looking for best part by Daniel Caesar or by uh, her and Daniel Caesar I wish it would highlight it at least like down below so that you know like oh that's where it is in the album it doesn't do that either and then you can obviously from there once again add plus and then add it to uh, your library or you can just hit the drop down here add to playlist new playlist or just add it to that current playlist in which case it drops in right there and now you have that added to your playlist so that's in a nutshell, a chunky view of Apple Music preview. Um, again, there's a lot of jank with this. 
but it does the job for the most part of listening to your Apple Music library, um, especially if you use this a lot over, if you use this over Spotify or the other services out there, it does the job uh, for Windows, but obviously it's in preview. And unfortunately, like a lot of things on Windows in the Microsoft store, a lot of things end up staying in preview for a very long time, if forever. Um, you never actually see the beta label go away. So hopefully this actually gets improved and Apple actually keeps their word and updates this. Um, I guess one final word too is that uh, for this application as well, um, it says that once you install this application, iTunes will not open. And that is completely true. Um, and they said in order to restore iTunes stuff to come, well, I, your iTunes to come back, um, you have to uninstall the application. By my assumption, don't just uninstall this application. Also uninstall iTunes and then reinstall iTunes again in order to get iTunes to work like normal again. Um, and I think if you have both Apple TV and Apple Music um, on your computer, I would just uninstall both of those in order to get iTunes to function like normal again. So, yeah, that's about it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.